All right. It is uh, six o'clock in California, and I believe it's 3 p.m. in uh, Central Europe. With that, we can begin. So thank you very much for joining us today. There'll probably be a few more people joining in, but we'll start with the introductions first. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. We will be talking about national emergency warning systems or public warning systems. We'll talk specifically about EU Article 110, what it is and what it means for the member states of the European Union. We have Genesis approach to designing and implementing the systems in our experience. And of course, we'll have questions at the end uh, as well. There you go, thank you. Uh, today on the call, we have uh, Pablo Gomez, who is a director of strategic marketing for mass notification systems. Pablo is based in Madrid, Spain. And you have myself. My name is Paul Neyman. I'm VP of software sales for Genesis. And I'm located in San Jose, California. So here's the agenda for today. We'll talk a little bit about who we are, why we're here today, our past experience in implementing the systems. We'd like to specifically highlight uh, a use case with Australia and talk about industry activism, how the systems are being developed, what they mean, um, how the regulatory bodies view the systems. Then talk about the challenging challenges of designing such a system, what an ideal public warning system should look like. We'll address specifically Article 110, the language that it has, what it says, what it means. And then talk about the approach to crisis management altogether. And then segue into Genesis implementation of a public warning system called NEWS, National Emergency Warning Systems. Uh, its features and capabilities. And finally, do a Q&A at the end. With that, let's go ahead and proceed. So first things first, Genesis. Genesis is the critical communications company. We've been on the market for over 20 years now, offering our outdoor public warning systems that are capable of transmitting crystal clear speech and sounds for miles around. The systems have been deployed in over 74 countries, over 400 municipalities, toughest conditions from saltwater coastal areas to active theater, desert deployments. Now the systems are capable of not only outdoor mass notification, but also a traditional, what we call EMNS. It's the capability to deliver notifications to your cell phones, to broadcast to social media, to um, activate any existing infrastructure in the area, digital signs, interrupt the family TV stations, and pretty much leverage anything that is capable of getting your attention, getting a notification out to you. Now we have extensive experience in deploying these systems, the combined hybrid systems. Uh, we've been on the market offering such solutions since 2012. These are typically uh, large scale deployments. You can find them in California, in Texas, the entire territory of Puerto Rico, and there are also nationwide or countrywide deployments in Brazil, in Japan, and specifically in Australia. Now we work very closely with both public and private sector. We have experience working with government agencies that are tasked with operating and implementing the systems. And we work with the uh, Department of Defense as well. Let's talk a little bit about Australia because this is how the systems got to start. The uh, the impetus for designing such a system came from the government of the state of Victoria after a disastrous Black Saturday wildfire. The requirements were quite stringent. One, it had to be a location-based system, and Genesis was in fact the first uh, the first operator on the market to create such a system that is capable of sending location-based SMS. The requirement was that SMS had to cover 100% of subscribers. And by subscribers, we mean anyone who has a cell phone, not the people that opted into the system. The system operates without any public opt-in. Right? If you have a cell phone, you will get a notification. And the second set of requirement was related to performance. 180 seconds 
to solve the location for at least 50,000 subscribers, which means when the operators select a geofence, draw a polygon on the map, which includes at least 50,000 people, the system should have been able to resolve and calculate the accurate list of people who will get this notification in at least 180 seconds. Now, the speed of delivery was set at 500 SMS messages per second. Now, this is how we approach this. We've um, bid on these projects and we've deployed with two out of three national carriers. And we've completely met or exceeded all the requirements posted. Uh, the speed today is 500 SMS messages per second as set by the government. However, in our own tests in the lab, we've demonstrated that we're capable of achieving 3,000 SMS messages per second. That was in 2012. Today, we're capable of delivering over 16,000 SMS messages per second, which is unmatched by any other provider of such services in the world. As far as solving the location, it takes us less than 30 seconds to solve that polygon and calculate everyone who is going to receive that notification, which is, again, a factor of 6x compared to the original 180 seconds of the requirement. Now, let's talk a little bit about how we view this and how we approach this. We work closely with various uh, regulatory bodies and agencies that design uh, the format and the rules for the system. And to call out a few, uh, FEMA, we have a very uh, tight collaboration with FEMA, which is the agency in the United States that is operating uh, and supporting the nationwide infrastructure for delivering these notifications called IPOS. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we certified our software systems in addition to our hardware systems that have been certified for over a year now to work with IPOS. So we are an official IPOS originator now. And that public webinar with demonstration with everyone attending was uh, recorded by FEMA and is available publicly on their website. Uh, so at the end of this webinar, when we uh, send out thank you emails and follow-ups, we'll include the link to this recording as well. So you can see a specific implementation of Genesis in the United States and how it works with iPods. Now, when it comes to Europe, we're an active member of the European Emergency Number Association, and we work very closely with PEC Europe, which is Public Safety Communication Europe Forum, supporting these workshops and supporting the development of future public warning systems. Now, when it comes to a public warning system, what is the typical challenge that you face when you try to develop or implement one? Um, we've identified three specific um, requirements that we see critical to the success. One, the system has to be multi-hazard, which means that when there are multiple stakeholders in the country, in the nation, operating multiple agencies operating on the system, the system has to be able to be, one, customized for each specific agency, and second, be capable of delivering various alerts regardless of the nature of the disaster, whether it's a uh, minor traffic issue or a flooding in a particular region or maybe a wildfire or a large scale nationwide impact. The system has to be able to handle all of this and be configured so that uh, any agency can easily and seamlessly include it in their operations. Second, time critical. It is um, it is of utmost importance for a system to have performance to deliver these notifications on a nationwide scale. And as we've demonstrated, something like 16,000 SMS messages per second is a fantastic number, which means you can cover thousands of people in a very short span of time. And finally, it has to have massive reach. And any successful public warning system should have a backup way of not only sending these notifications over a location based SMS, or cell broadcast, but also have alternative channels. Because you can imagine that people turn off their cell phones, they don't necessarily hear them at night, or maybe they are on silent mode. So you have to have other ways to reach these people, either through outdoor mass notification, by delivering crystal clear cell wherever they are, by leveraging infrastructure in the country, for example, digital signs on the roads, on the storefronts, uh, anything that is capable of attracting your attention. Now, a reasonable question here is, do public system warning systems actually work? And we have two 
examples to talk about. One is Sri Lanka in 2004 suffered a devastating tsunami, which resulted in over a quarter million deaths overall, and specifically in Sri Lanka, about 35,000 deaths total. They had plenty of time. There was 90 minutes between the initial earthquake and the destructive waves arriving at the coast. And unfortunately, Sri Lanka did not have a system in place. Now, had they had a system, uh, in as little as 90 seconds, a public warning system could have notified the entire coastal population in Sri Lanka, which, according to today's calculations, could have saved over 85% of lives, giving them ample time to evacuate. The second example is Australia, again, the Black Saturday wildfire, which resulted in 173 deaths. Um, the after situation analysis showed that all of those losses could have been avoided with an effective public warning systems in place. Now, it's not only the experts that are realizing the need for a public warning system today. The uh, residents themselves, the um, country population demands that such a system be implemented. And this is not our opinion. This is something that we see in the media today. These are just some of the highlights. I'll let you read the news, but I want you to uh, attract your attention to a couple of articles. One is from Australia. This is um, an article talking about the lack of a public warning system when the wildfire happened. And the second is from Washington Post that talks about my native state, California, um, that the only California county uh, that had no fatalities from wildfire is the one that could have, that could send timely notifications to its residents. And uh, what's interesting is that in California last year, as you probably have heard, we've suffered devastating wildfires as well, compounded by the fact that the state uh, utility electricity operator uh, was shutting off power statewide, which essentially rendered practically every single mass notification system helpless and unable to deliver notifications because without power, the uh, cell towers were down and without cell towers, there is no way to send notification to residents' cell phones until um, the systems that were deployed by Genesis for specific cities and counties in California that are capable of operating on their own power, capable of operating on their own satellite feed kicked in and delivered notification to the residents. So this again highlights the importance of having a backup uh, connectivity, backup strategy in place, not relying only on SMS delivery. Now, what is the challenge of designing an effective public notification system? One, of course, its ability to deliver these notifications. Um, you have to be able to deliver them on any available modality and any available channel. But in addition to sending out the alert, you also have to have the way to send out instructions on what to do. If you remember the accidental notification that went out in the state of Hawaii that a ballistic missile was approaching, it was just an alert that a missile is incoming and people panicked. People were hiding their children in, in uh, sewers, covering them with manhole covers because there were no instructions, there was no follow-up. So it is critical for the operators running the system to not only send the alert, but also send precise and clear instructions for the population on what to do. But to send out these instructions, you have to have an understanding of what's actually happening, where your people are, uh, where are they moving, what is going on on the ground. You have to have situational awareness. Genesis provides such situational awareness because we integrate natively with the carrier hardware. So we provide anonymized data, real-time data to the operators, and they can see every single handset that is connected to the towers currently, uh, where it is, where it's moving to, so they have an accurate picture at any time. And finally, the system has to be trusted. When you receive these notifications, um, the system has to have a brand of trust uh, created by the operators, by the agencies running the system, saying that if you get this message, this means this is indeed a serious concern. It is for your safety and you should take this message seriously. So in short, the challenge of designing an effective mass notification system is to is ability to maximize the public attention rate. Now let's segue into Article 110 specifically. 
Uh, European article was created by the European Electronic Communications Code, and it says that every single member state of the European Union must have a, an effective mass notification system, and the deadline is set to June 2022. Now, it's up to each individual member state to select the technology that they will leverage for delivering these mass notifications, but at a minimum, it must be either cell broadcast or location-based SMS. Now, Genesis, of course, supports both, so we're perfectly positioned for any country implementing such system and leverage whatever is available in that country. If the carriers support cell broadcast, we can do cell broadcast. If the carriers only support um, SMS, location-based SMS, we'll do that, or we can do a combination of both. Now, let's talk about how we implemented the system altogether. So this is what we call NEWS, the National Emergency Warning System. If you think about it as the glue sort of sitting in the middle and accepting external data from various sensors or payloads from other systems triggering the notifications, then you have outbound channels of communication. Of course, one of the most important ones are delivered through the mobile carrier, but also all the additional ways to propagate these messages out. The ability to operate the system, and we'll focus on this in subsequent slides. And finally, critical event management tool. And we'll talk about every single piece here in detail. So you can see the system is end-to-end, -end, is comprehensive, and it can be completely turnkey, which means we can customize the system, and we're all about creating something that fits natively into your workflows, or something that doesn't disrupt, doesn't cause you to adjust your existing operations. And I think we, this is a hallmark of a, of a successful system if it can plug in natively into your existing workflows and operations. So let's talk about interfaces and integrations. First, we start with the mobile alert delivery through the carriers. As I mentioned, we integrate natively with various carrier hardware and we support various deployment models as well. It could be in the carrier data center, it could be in our own cloud, but the most important part is that we integrate natively with the carrier hardware and we can read the signatures from the actual smartphones and understand their location uh, and their capabilities, whether they support cell broadcast or only capable of receiving SMS. So when the agencies publish the alert, Genesis system intelligently figures out the current coverage, real time current coverage maps for the carrier, any existing bottlenecks, creates appropriate queues for delivery, whether through cell broadcast or SMS, and starts executing these deliveries at tremendous speeds. So the operators running the system don't have to think about how to alert their population. All they need to worry about is actual handling the actual incident and defining the polygon where they want to send out these notifications. Now, the second part, uh, what, uh, what else can we propagate in addition to the carrier technology? And that is, of course, capability to broadcast over outdoor mass notification systems. We integrate natively with LRAD technology. Regular SMS, not necessarily location-based, capability to deliver phone calls, send notifications to the mobile app. If the public wants to opt in through the mobile app explicitly, they're perfectly capable to do so. Broadcast to all existing social media in the country. And of course, we support CAP protocol, which is called Common Alerting Protocol, a standard for exchange of information for alerting between various systems. So that allows us to, for example, broadcast the same alert on local TV, on local radio stations, or any other infrastructure from digital signs to uh, strobe lights, anything that is available in the country. And one specific configuration that we've created here is iPause. So that is country specific, and it shows that we can customize the system for any particular country any particular technology that they have chosen. Now, moving on, how do you operate the system? Well, there's a couple of ways. One is you can uh, initiate all your interactions through the web interface. So any computer connected to the internet, any laptop with a modern browser is perfectly capable of accessing the system from anywhere. So you don't have to be in the operation center to initiate the alerts because of course things happen 
when you're on the go, they're not waiting for you to be at the operation center all the time. And because we support your mobility, you get the equal functionality from the mobile app as well. So wherever you are, you can leverage your web interface or mobile app to interact with the system and initiate the alerts and understand the, um, uh, the progress of your campaigns. But we also provide a robust API, and again, back to the ability to integrate into your workflows. If you are already using an incident management tool that your operators are comfortable with, they can stay in this tool completely, and all of the interactions with Genesis system for delivery of notifications and report generation can go two-way through the API. So the operators never leave the plane of the tool that they're used to. Uh, they create their polygons, they assess the situation from their incident management tool, for example, but all of the actual deliveries are handled by Genesis. Now, talking about external integration, again, for the a successful mass notification system, it has to be able to read various payloads coming from external systems. And this could be either um, hardware sensors, for example, flood sensors, wildfire cameras, maybe traffic cameras, anything that is capable of triggering an event on, on Genesis. And internally, you can define a business rule uh, that will trigger an instant notification either to a internal staff for them to attract their attention that something is happening, or automatic rebroadcast to the public in the affected area, bypassing the human delay altogether if the situation warrants it. Uh, outside of hardware sensors, you can also include any other existing system that is uh, capable of sending a payload to us. So this could be, again, an incident management system. You create your incident, you get to a step where you need to send out these communications, everything is done via the API, Genesis performs the delivery and returns the results to you, or a really any other system you could think of could completely integrate into Genesis. And finally, uh, workforce management, uh, what we call TSM, team safety. Once the incident starts, it's not enough to just send out the announcement to the public. You also want to provide specific real-time, up-to-date instructions to your team, to your first responders on how to handle the incident. So you effectively switch to critical event management. And the workforce management component allows you two-way exchange of rich media, photos, and videos from the people on the ground to the emergency operations center and vice versa. So effectively, you turn your people onto the ground, on the ground uh, into sensors. You see what they see. They are your eyes in the field. So you send them real-time instructions on what to do, and you get uh, two-way communication back from them on how the situation unfolds, what is happening, what is it that they see, uh, so you can quickly analyze the impact to your operations and adjust your alerts to the public accordingly. So this, of course, all boils back to the fact that the system has to be able to send out uh, precise instructions and you adjust your operations based on the feedback from the field, uh, from the external sensors and from the actual people working on mitigating the situation. So critical event management is absolutely important. Now let's talk a little bit about specific uh, parts of implementation that we created. The system is very easy to operate. These are a couple of screenshots from our UI. Uh, these are two prospects that we are working on. You can see it's very GIS or map centric. We support various uh, mapping technologies that are standard in these three. Uh, open layers and Esri are of course supported. So you can include all of your existing geo resources that you have already developed and seamlessly transfer them into Genesis. So when you operate your alert campaigns, everything that you expect, your zones of administrative control, uh, your geofences, all your uh, assets that are already deployed will show up as well. It's very easy to add additional channels for communication and also create templates for future use for all the expected situations. So when the incident does happen, uh, you can launch your alert campaigns with just one or two clicks. Um, reporting. Reporting is critical to a success of the system. Now, Genesis provides real-time reports of everything that happened uh, on the system, uh, both internal logs, so you can see every single step and action that was undertaken by the operators, 
whether they created a template or launched the alert or simply logged in, logged out, everything is recorded for future analysis. But also reporting functionality related to the actual campaigns. Um, so the operators can use the system to see simple things such as population movement or monitor the map in real time because we're reading um, your signatures from the smartphones in real time all the time. Um, this could be a system for simply monitoring uh, for unusual activity and gives operators an advanced warning if something is happening that they should be aware of even if there are no reports coming in from the field. So all of these reports are stored in long-term format and of course are available for expert in, um, uh, in common exchange formats for analysis by uh, third-party analytical tools. Here's an interesting example. You can see these are the coverage maps being calculated real time. These are, um, these are the uh, telecom provider coverage maps with a specific potential flooding zone overlaid in red over it so the operators can see uh, if there's anything happening that needs their attention and should there be a need to send out these notifications, they can see how well this area is covered with uh, telecom providers. Now, moving on, uh, permissions. So permissions is an important part of any successful mass notification system. Of course, you'll find a typical uh, flexible model of role and permissions integrated into, into Genesis. Uh, it's administrators or super administrators uh, that are allowed to configure subsystems, as we call them, and define uh, jurisdictions. So jurisdiction could be uh, as small as a sector of a city or as large as a state, for example. And within those sub-organizations, you have local administrators that typically manage the templates, manage the uh, alert campaigns, and everything else. And then you have operators, people that are actually using the system the most. These are people that send out the alerts, understand the reports, and um, actually manage your incident on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, with jurisdiction, it gives you the capability to create a waterfall system. At the top level, you have ultimate authority in the country that is capable of broadcasting nationwide alerts. And then you have waterfall subsystems where local jurisdictions can have their own localized incidents. And they don't necessarily bubble up to the, um, to the top authority because it could be just uh, a local, uh, local notification, but everything else is, um, is running at the, at the individual level. Now, situational awareness. We talked a little bit about this and I'd like to bring your attention again to it. Um, it's something that is, uh, it is critical for a mass, very successful mass notification system. Um, because we integrate natively with the carrier hardware, we're capable of reading all of the signatures and putting them on the map. In addition, so now you have two ways to get this data. One is automated. You simply see population movement and all of this data is anonymized. So we respect your uh, privacy, we respect the uh, privacy of those that receive these alerts. All you see are anonymized statistics on the smartphones moving around. And you also have data coming in from your actual people in the field. So combined and overlaid onto the same maps, you get a pretty clear visual picture on what is happening and how best to mitigate the incident. So some of the examples that we have deployed here, this is for example in, uh, in uh, Mexico uh, for Telefonica, and these two are for specific uh, government agencies in Spain. Um, so GIS is a critical tool and critical part of what you do, and Genesis has fully implemented that with advanced visualizations and various uh, influence areas drawn automatically up for you. So um, to summarize, I'd like to bring your attention to some of the features that we talked about. It's ability to implement multiple deployment modes in the cloud or on-prem with a carrier. It's capability to leverage multiple technologies for the broadcast, uh, it's location-based SMS or uh, cell broadcast. It's ability to integrate multiple external data sources and have open interfaces. A uh, successful system can um, be completely customized for a, specific, uh, for a specific agency or a specific mode of operation. And uh, all the other features that come with uh, implementation in Europe, it's automatic detection of the nationality of the subscriber, automatic language selection 
for delivery mobile app to activate your campaigns in the field and all the other uh, small but useful features that are typically associated with the system. At this point, I'd like to switch to questions. Let me give me a few seconds, please. I'm going to pop up the window, which you probably won't see, but we have a list of questions. Give me one second. There we go. Let's see if there are any questions coming from the field. Okay, uh, so one of the questions was um, regarding the privacy um, of the people receiving these notifications. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, all of the data that we get from the carriers is completely anonymized. So essentially what we provide, we provide the front end for the agencies to operate on. And this front end gives you the heat maps. Let me actually back up a little bit so you can see uh, one second, let me switch to the slide right here. This would be a great slide to show. This is the front end that the various agency operators would see. It shows them the heat maps uh, and the clustering of the contacts, but they don't see any specific data associated with the handset because it's stripped as we read the signatures from the carrier. In fact, um, all of that data resides with the carrier only. And of course, according to the privacy rules, nobody else can see. It. Um, so the agencies operating the front end um, see where the population moves are, uh, where they're clustered together and can make intelligent decisions based on that. But the back end that Genesis also provides uh, performs the delivery and the calculations based on this anonymized data, uh, creates priority queues on how the, uh, how the messages are delivered. Let's see, do we have anything else? Um, can the system send WhatsApp messages? Yes, absolutely. WhatsApp integration is included. Um, we consider this a social media. Um, so you can do Facebook, you can do Twitter, uh, you can do WhatsApp, you can do YouTube. Uh, and of course, if you have a social media that is of particular importance in a specific country, uh, then uh, we could create a customized integration for that uh, social media as well. Okay, um, one of the questions here is pricing minimum or ballpark for a complete system given the smallest EU country. Um, I'll leave this to Pablo. Pablo, do you want to take this question and talk a little bit about how the pricing is created? Okay, <clears throat> hello, hello everybody. It's nice to talk to you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, regarding pricing and uh, our business model, um, one of the, of the pillars we are building our solution and the business model is flexibility. So it also applies to pricing. Um, we need to be flexible because uh, there are many differences between uh, requirements and of course the sites of different countries, especially in Europe, there are many differences between the smaller countries to the bigger uh, ones. You know? So let's see that. Let's say that uh, uh, the business model of the system is depending on uh, first uh, the size of the population to be covered, uh, second uh, the different features as you has uh, you have already uh, pre been presented by Paul. There are many, many different modules and capabilities of the system, communication channels, integrations, even different ways to interact with the system. So uh, all those features are also a driver you know, of, the, of the business model. And finally, uh, the performance. Uh, there are many different requirements regarding performance. Uh, so performance and capability in terms of um, command and control centers able to connect to the system individually and independently are also drivers of the system. Uh, apart from, from that, uh, considering those points onwards, we try to adapt anyway uh, our proposals to the needs of the any needs or requirements from customer in order to uh, to try to make uh, the project and deployment happen, uh, considering first needs from the customers than any other thing. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, there is a couple of 
there's a couple of other questions that are related to uh, delivery of messages and performance. So let me answer those. Um, does the platform support sending alert messages to people who are abroad? Um, so it depends. If, uh, if you have not opted into the system, then if you are outside of a polygon defined by the operators, then no, you will not uh, receive a message because you're simply not there, so you shouldn't be. However, uh, because we support delivery to email, to uh, mobile app, uh, to all the other channels, we create a public sign-up portal where you can explicitly opt in and say, I want to receive these notifications regardless of whether I am in the area or not. And I'm interested in specific topics. So some of the topics maybe you cannot opt out of, depending on how the uh, agency running the system decides. Let's say if it's a critical notification, yes, you'll get it, even if you're outside of the country. But maybe if it's of localized importance, then you can say, you know what, I'm not interested in weather-related notifications. Don't notify me about this. And then, no, you will not get this message. So really, it all depends on how the system is configured and whether you want to opt in to the system or not. Paul, uh, yes. may I ask yes, uh, uh, a, a little detail, but it's important. Uh, talking from people from abroad, let's say when uh, talking about roamers in, in a European country, uh, the requirement of the uh, Article 110 of the EECC is uh, is just requiring you know uh, messages being received also from people from abroad. This is covered by by news uh, with both channels, uh, location-based SMS and, and cell broadcasting. Uh, all the people is automatically opted in the system as Paul said before. Even when you are a tourist or a visitor in the in the country, you will be uh, considered in the system. In the case as uh, as Paul said before, you know you are inside uh, within the emergency area. Okay, um, we have a question about SMS delivery. Um, so we can deliver over 16,000 SMS messages per second. The question is that typically the bottleneck is with the carrier. So the question is, can we elaborate on how we work with the local carriers, our, their capacity from our experience and what we do to optimize the delivery? Pablo, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I uh, absolutely, and it's a very good one. It's a very good question and you are totally right. Let's say our system is able to support a great performance, uh, but uh, it's it's true that uh, from that moment onwards we are sending the message. Uh, it's going to depend from the capability, the capacity of the mobile network operators in the core network and especially in the radio network. You are totally right. Okay, uh, we work uh, very closely with the mobile network operator and uh, with the let's say with the final customer, which is the authority. Uh, with the capability of uh, creating and managing uh, communication campaigns in order to uh, review that performance together. It's it's important to do, a, 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 let's say, a, 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 a review, a careful review together to the telco just to test uh, uh, the real performance they are supporting. Good news is that um, SMS capability used to be uh, Okay, very, very uh, used to have a very inter important dimensioning in order to cover some peaks during the year. So uh, they used to uh, support you know, a very high uh, SMS sending rate. Uh, rate. However, um, it's important to also uh, to tell that once we deploy the system and we test the capability and the capacity of the telco, and we finally reach the maximum uh, at the SMS rates. Uh, SMS per second rate. Uh, we deploy a set of uh, algorithms and mechanisms, mechanisms uh, to uh, prevent any kind of overload of the network, to prevent uh, just uh, you know uh, causing any kinds of, of problems because of our high uh, performance sending SMS. So we are testing, continuously monitoring the capability of SMS centers in order to. Uh, balance the traffic through the different systems in the network and we are monitoring how they are working just to adapt the traffic uh, and prevent the congestion in the network. Great, thank you. And on the heels of that, Pablo, question is, what is the length of time to fully install and, and operate the service? 
Another good question, because it's very, very hardly dependent on their uh, on their requirements. Okay, it's not going to be a matter of, of days. However, it could be very quick if the let's say if all conditions are are really set up in terms of you know requirements and um, uh, and the readiness of the messaging centers. I have to say that in this in this project. Um, we spend very long time just reviewing requirements with the customer, uh, doing uh, performing uh, project manager activities uh, together to the customer and to the teams of the mobile network operators. Uh, so they could be very quick uh, if all the pieces, all the requirements, or everybody is totally ready before starting the project. However, it's very dependent on the, you know, on on the features which are going to be uh, deployed. Wonderful, thank you. And of course, the follow-up question to that is: uh, Is there a service recurring revenue? I guess the the question is maybe I'll rephrase it and let me see if I got this right. Uh, do we charge any recurring fees for operating the system? Okay, yeah, uh, we have different business models in this case. You know, we can uh, adapt uh, those business models to requirements. If there are some customer uh, customers willing to let's say to to pay. Uh, the deployments and the cost of the system at the beginning, and after that, just to have a, a, a smaller recurrent price covering the operation of the system, support, maintenance, uh, updates, uh, upgraded of the system. Uh, but there are there is other possibilities for other customers who prefer, you know, to have a, a, a the same price for for the first year and the second and. Uh, year onwards pricing, let's say, and having just an annual price, a fixed price covering everything from the beginning, closing maybe a multi-year contract for three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, we have a question about, uh, again, about the tours and receiving the uh, location, oh, I'm sorry, receiving the notification when you're traveling. So the question is, can news send SMS to citizens registering back home as traveling in another country and roaming on another national network. So, for example, I've registered in UK that I'm going to um, to Thailand, and um, will I get a notification if something happens in Thailand? Uh, can can the UK office communicate with all of their tourists? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, why not? You know, it's possible to. Uh, this depends on. Um, on the objective of the customer, let's say, uh, but it's totally possible and probably convenient to have this kind of features. Um, so uh, people have been, you know, the national people have been, uh, can be receiving uh, warnings uh, from the national government when they are abroad. Yeah, so it's totally possible. It depends, you know, how the, the, the customer is, you know, set up. Uh, it's it's uh, defining the, the the system and what what they have to do with them. But it's totally possible to send a notification to the people uh, who are abroad and so on. Wonderful. And while we're speaking about the capabilities, question is: Does Genesis platform have predictive capabilities? Okay, a good one. You know, uh, we are, I have to say while working on that, we are already uh, we are better said we have already. Uh, offering the capability of mixing very different kind of very interesting data from uh, the let's say the the number of the people the population density and uh, number of the people in the different areas even how the people is moving of course always talking about aggregated and anonymized data of course uh, we can mix this that this data together to other data from Early warning systems, uh, weather information, uh, earthquakes, tsunami information, any kind of you know sensors of IOT or IoT devices, uh, we can integrate into the system. <coughs> Sorry, so we are mixing this data together and we are offering in a, a smart way, uh, normally through the um, the GIS interface, the maps interface, and we are already offering some particular algorithms depending on the requirements of the customer to get some predictions. Uh, I have to say this is an important part of the of Genesis roadmap for next versions uh, for this year and onwards. And we are just yes, planning to expand more and more those uh, predictive are 
our, our, our artificial intelligence, let's say, capabilities. Wonderful, thank you. And here's another question. Uh, what is our expected timing on the first EU awards, European awards? Ah, that's uh, interesting, you know. I have to say that, uh, okay, our first point is that uh, the Article 110 deadline is uh, June 2022. Uh, this is, let's say, the official date for all the European members to have the system the systems uh, work on, on, uh, up and running, let's say. Um, there is a tendency in all, in, in all Europe, in all countries, to, to be you know, working in those, uh, uh, in those projects. It's something that uh, the, the countries are feeling positive to, to deploy because they understand that uh, the benefits of this kind of system, which is good. Uh, everybody's moving forward. I have to say that um, coronavirus is having an impact in the progress of the uh, emergency agencies working in defining the requirements and so on. You can imagine that they are, in many cases, the same uh, teams uh, working in the, in the requirements of the system and initial designs of the systems for public warning. They are the same teams also coordinating other emergency procedures for COVID. So it's been a very, very hard selling in time for, for them. So uh, in many cases, they are, uh, they are being delayed, okay? From our side, uh, we are expecting first awards uh, for, let's say, for the Q4 this year, Q1 next year. Should be something, uh, you know, an, a realistic expectation. All right, wonderful. Uh, Pablo, I don't think we have any more questions coming in at this point. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Any closing statements? Okay, uh, from uh, my perspective, Paul, is just uh, to emphasize the importance of uh, having a, a really unified and integrated platform controlling all the multi-channel uh, capabilities with the possibility of, of you know, of growing in the future, evolving in the future, let's say. One of, uh, you know, the, the, our system is, is made, built uh, on, on some uh, pilars, let's say flexibility is one of them. We are very flexible. The platform, it's also very flexible and modular. Uh, it's possible to start just with a minimum configuration, but having all the potential to easily evolve the system in the next future. So it's very simple to start just fulfilling the minimum requirements of the Article 110 and growing the system in the future according to future needs or even to cover other use cases that could be uh, appearing or, or, for instance, the case of COVID-19 is a very clear case, you know, because uh, you could be starting with a system maybe based on server broadcasting, but now it's very interesting to have uh, the situational awareness of the location of the people and your fencing you are having with location-based SMS. So it's possible to start with one channel, expand to other channels in the next future very easily. Having a real integrated platform in which you are going to very easily uh, activate campaigns uh, through the different um, communication channels. You know, it's, it's really integrated and it's really um, efficient in, in the use of the system. Yeah, I'm, thank you. Great point. I'd like to emphasize that since the system has been installed in Australia, no no lives have been lost due to lack of warning. So that's I think is a fantastic achievement. Um, we have one one more follow up question, and I I think that's a great question. Thank you. Besides Everbridge, who are your competitors for the EU countries? Okay, uh, with one, you know, apart from Everbridge. We have other competitors. Uh, we can uh, be talking about a couple of samples. You know, there are companies like um, uh, Jedicom or companies like uh, OpenCode. Uh, other competitors like one to many or other providers or just you know the server broadcasting centers. You know, are very different kind of competitors. Some of them, uh, let's say a few of them, are just offering everything. You know, this, the end-to-end -to -end multi-channel solution. Many of them are just offering just a few pieces. Uh, 
specific parts of the solution. Maybe uh, one kind of messaging center, maybe the system to activate campaigns through a particular communication channel. So, <coughs> sorry, there are different kinds of competitors. Uh, let me ask you, only few of them are, yeah. are competing or for a channel. Right. Let me ask you this. Uh, is there any other system that offers both the front end, the back end, and native integrations with outdoor and all the other channels? Is there something like that on the market in Europe? Okay. Uh, we can say that uh, the only company offering the, the um, portfolio of communication channels, we, uh, we are included in our platform, including, let's say, acoustic devices, hardware for outdoor, indoor, um, of course, the communication channel through the mobile operator sending a geolocated uh, a communications to the people fulfilling Article 110, but also with the complements of other communication channel, radio, television, and so on, is only offered by Genesis. Got it. Uh, another, and it's a, a very good comment, uh, comment, sorry, in the list of questions. Yeah, you are right. One too many has been uh, acquired by, by Everbit re very recently. You are right, uh, Bjork. Yep. So that means one one less competitor on the market then. You are right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I think this is it as far as the questions come. Thank you very much. I, I love the participation from the audience. Thank you very much for your questions on point and very precise. Um, well, um, I think with that we can wrap up today. And uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, the webinar has been recorded. We're going to publish the link. We're going to send all the materials that we promised. And please stay tuned. And uh, if we missed uh, anything, you know our uh, number to call on the website. You know our email. We'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Pablo, thank you for your participation, too. And with that, we're going right. to wrap up the, uh, the webinar. OK, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Paul.